Our story concerns the Haney family. For over 200 years, a Haney had worked this same land. Now it belonged to John and Emma Haney. Everything considered, it had been a good life, uneventful, perhaps even dull, but it suited them. For over 40 years, they had lived in the same house, and for those 40 years, the land had been good to them. Its abundance had fed them and clothed them and helped to raise two sons, John Jr. and James. This was home. They couldn't be happy anyplace else. Their only desire was to spend the rest of the time remaining to them here. Here where they had come so many years ago as man and wife. Simple, down-to-earth people. The Haneys were not given to flights of fancy. But who is not awed and troubled in the presence of death? coming. Jamie. Well, you're going to keep me out here all night? No. Come in, Jamie. Hi, Ma. Jamie. Oh, Jamie. You've changed, Johnny. You're not having any fun, are you? Sitting on the farm by yourself doesn't leave much time for fun, Jamie. John's been working awful hard, Jamie. He would. Old, dependable John. Let me fix you something to eat. No, thanks, Ma. I eat in town. Well, some coffee, then, and a piece of pie? All right. Just a small piece, Ma. I knew you'd get here in time, Jamie. Pa's been asking and asking for you. He has, huh? Probably wants to whale the tar out of me. Oh, Jamie. All right, Ma. Guess I might as well see him. Yeah, I might as well, Jamie. No use making the trip for nothing, is there? He's all right. Take his feet, Jamie. We'll get him back to bed. Pa? Pa, it's me, Jamie. Pa? Pa. What'd you say, Pa? Pa. Did he make much sense? No. Just mumbling. It's been like that for two days now. He knew you, Jamie. I know he did. Sure. Sure he did, Ma. Let's go downstairs. Go on, Johnny. I'll be down in a minute. How did it happen? His horse stumbled and fell on him. How old as he is, you think he'd have more sense? Jamie, where have you been all this time? All over. New York, Chicago, San Francisco. Kept moving. For ten years? Well, you know me, Johnny boy. I'm a little surprised you came back. Johnny! Why shouldn't I? Oh, I get it. You're still sore because I took off and you had to stay here and do the work. Well, you could have gotten out, too. And who to run the farm? Or did you forget that Pa was too old even then? All right, all right, so hate me. 
But don't forget, I was only 17 years old. How much was I supposed to know? You knew enough to steal every cent Pa had in the house. Stop it. Stop it right now. No. Let him get it off his chest. So that's it, huh? So that's what's been griping you all these years. Well, let me tell you something. I didn't steal anything. That money belonged to me. It did, huh? Just how do you figure that, Jamie? You know how I figure it. Ever since I was 10 years old, Pa had me doing the work of a hired hand. Only I never got the money a hand would get. Only my food and your hand-me-down clothes. He owed me that money. And how about me, Jamie? What was I doing all those years you were working your poor little fingers to the bone? I was having a picnic, huh? That's your problem, Johnny boy. If you had any gumption, you'd have beaten me to the cash box. Enough! I won't have any more of this in my house. You ought to be ashamed, both of you. Your father's dying right over your heads. You stand there fighting like animals. Jamie, I'm going to fix up your old room. When you're finished, you march yourself upstairs and go to bed. And you, Johnny, not another word. Remember, your brothers. I just don't understand what gets into you. Here, Ma, let me help you. Tell me the truth, Jamie. Just for once. Why did you come back? You never were very bright, were you, Johnny? All right, I'll tell you. Your telegram got to me at the right time. I'm broke. And I figured in ten years the old man had enough time to build up another pile. You make me sick to my guts, Jamie. You should be standing here. Take a look at yourself, Johnny. You're only three years older than I am, and anybody would take you to be my father. You should be sick. You outsmarted yourself this time, Jamie. You made the trip for nothing. If Pa dies, you don't get a dime. Something to eat. Nothing for me, thank you, Emma. Just wanted to see if there's anything I could do. Maybe some delay in settling the estate on account of your father not leaving a will. He did leave a will, Mr. Atterbury. That's funny. I was his lawyer. I didn't draw it. Well, drew it himself. May I see it? Yes, sir. Leaves everything to you, Johnny. Knowing that as head of the family, you will take care of your mother and young brother. Johnny, I'm so glad. Wait a minute, let me see that. Uh, seems legal, should save us quite a bit of time. Not legal enough. I'm afraid I have a big surprise for you, Johnny boy. What's this? Read it. To my youngest son, James, I leave all my worldly possessions and trust that he will provide for his mother as long as she lives, and it is my hope that he will do what is fair for my oldest son, his brother, John, Jr. And which is the legal one? Yours is dated August the 8th, 1892. Jamie is dated July 14th, 1898. Jamie's the one that'll stand up in court. I can't imagine what he was thinking about. Two wills. John knew what he was doing. I know what he was thinking. You know his temper, Mr. Atterbury. Pa and me had a real knockdown and drag out of my wanting to enlist for Cuba. He said I'd be sorry if I went. Well? Why all the sour faces? Ma has nothing to worry about. And you know I'll take care of you, Johnny boy. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you will, Jamie. Mr. Atterbury, how long will it take for all the legal stuff to clear up? What's your hurry, Jamie? Well, I thought I'd put the farm on the market as soon as I can. Jamie, you're not going to sell the farm. It's our home. Oh, no, Ma. You know I'm not cut out to be a farmer. Besides, we ought to get a good price for it right about now. But, Jamie... Where'll Ma go, Jamie? Don't worry about that. I'll take care of her. Where, Jamie? 
Well, you always wanted to visit Aunt Martha in Kansas. Now's your chance. Oh, but Jamie, that was only for a visit. I can't imagine living any place but here. When she gets back from a visit, what then, Jamie? Oh, Ma deserves a rest. You know, at her age, you ought to take it easy. I thought we'd get a room for her at Mrs. Chalmers. That's nothing but a home for old folks. You'd like it, Ma. You wouldn't have to work anymore. And there'd be people your own age to talk to. You know what I mean, Johnny. Sure. I know what you mean, Jamie. To get her off your hands for the rest of your life, you'd like her to sit on a porch and rot. That's what I get for being a nice fellow. Well, this is my farm. Pa left it to me, and I'll do what I like. If Ma don't do what I want, okay, you can take care of her. What are you doing? Johnny! Stop it, you two! You hit me, you won't get a cent! Johnny, stop! Listen to me! Jamie's right. I have been working too hard. I'm tired. You know I want to see Martha again, and when I come back, I'd like to live at Mrs. Chalmers. I, it, I think it'd be very nice. All right, Ma. I'll be good. Mr. Atterbury, how do we go about breaking that will? I wouldn't try that, Johnny. Well, I don't know, Johnny. Father was of sound mind when he wrote it. Well, how about the part about taking care of Ma? You call throwing her into a home taking care of her? You know, Pa didn't mean that. Well, there could be a chance of stopping the sale of the farm or preventing the dissipation of the assets during your mother's lifetime. Don't you worry about Ma. I'll take care of her. You just mind your own business. Now, I'll tell you something. Get out of my house. Jamie, he's your brother. Then why don't he act it? He's been beating on me ever since I got here. You heard him. Now, this is my house, and I want you out of here. Johnny, he's upset. Maybe for a little while, till he cools off. Will you take the case, Mr. Atterbury? Yes, Johnny. I'll take it. All right, Jamie. I'll get out of your house. For now. Have your fun while you can. the estate of George Haney. Petition for order confirming sale of real property of the estate. Ready for petitioner, Your Honor. Ready for the contestant, Your Honor. Very well, gentlemen, you may proceed. May it please the court. All of the statutory facts necessary for the court's approval of the sale are alleged in the verified petition of Mr. James Haney, the duly appointed executor of the estate. The estate consists entirely of the farm which is being sold and the price offered exceeds the appraised value. It is to the best interest of the estate to convert the real property into cash, since the executor is without funds with which to support his mother or himself, or to meet the expenses of the administration of this estate. Scott Aaron. Your Honor. Now perhaps we can shorten the issues. Do you propose to introduce evidence that the sales price is too low? No, Your Honor. It's our position. It's not necessary for the sale of this farm at all. Haney family have worked this property for 40 years. Profit. It's Emma Haney's home. The source of her care and comfort. That's what John Haney meant to say in his will. What is your own personal reason for trying to void your father's will? I have none. Oh, in other words, then, if... If this court should declare the will invalid, you'd make no attempt to share in your father's estate? No, sir, I would not. Then why has this case been brought to trial in the first place? I just want to make sure that my mother gets what's rightfully hers. Well, now, the wording of the will is quite plain. Your brother James is to take care of your mother. Have you any doubts that he will? I sure do. Would you tell the court what your doubts are? Because I know Jamie. I know how he thinks. He's a liar and a thief. Objection. Sustained. Mr. Haney, I must warn you that this court will not tolerate name calling. Another outburst like that and I will cite you for contempt. I'm sorry, Your Honor. No further questions. Mr. Bell? No questions. Now well, it's uh, now nearly noon. This court will adjourn until 2.30 o'clock.
I gotta run, Ma. I got a date with a customer for the farm. Jamie, do you have to sell? Yes, I have to. Now don't you start on me, Ma. I had enough trouble with Johnny. I'll pick you up in time for court. Jamie sees It's you. all right, Ma. I waited for him to leave. I won't be long. I just want to get some of my things. Please hurry. I don't want any more trouble. Pa! Ah! Johnny, look in Genesis 27. What? What'd you say, Pa? Genesis 27. What about Genesis 27, Pa? Johnny? Yeah, Ma, what is it? Johnny, who are you talking to? Nobody, Ma. Nobody. I thought I heard voices. Are you all right, Johnny? Yeah, Ma, I'll be down in a minute, Ma. That's good, Ma. Yes, Jamie, I don't want to be late. You're not in that much of a hurry. Please, Jamie, I want to get there on time. Okay. Ma! Ma! Johnny just came to get his things. You got what you came for? I got more than I came for. I just talked to Pa. Johnny. You what? You're right, Ma, you did hear voices. What's going on here? I talked to Pa and he said, look in Genesis 27. Genesis 27? That's the story of Jacob and Esau, where Jacob stole his brother's birthright. What's that supposed to mean? That's what I'm going to find out. Where's the Bible? Right, everything in this house is mine. Keep your hands out of there. Get away from me. Jamie! Stop! I warned him, Ma. What's the matter, Johnny? Nothing in it? What'd you expect to find? A new will? There is no other will. And I'll tell you something else. The next time I find you in here, even mine gonna stop me from putting a load of buckshot in you. Now get out of my house and stay out. Please go, Johnny. Johnny boy. Might as well take Genesis 27 with you. That's all you're gonna get. Mr. Haney, much has been made of the fact that you wish to sell your farm and place your mother in what has been called an old folks home. Would you tell the court exactly what it is you had in mind? Yes, sir. Your Honor, my mother's worked hard all her life. As long as I can remember, she's been cooking, sewing, washing. Why, she even helped in the fields when we were short-handed. Up until now, we've never been able to do anything about it. But now I can, and I want to. Ma, is your this Honor? the family Bible? Isn't it obvious, Mr. Haney is Didn't we used to have another cruel, one? Yes, your father. Where is it, Ma? I don't know, Johnny. In the attic, I expect. His mother, and whose only wish is to see that the rest of her days are happy ones. Mr. Blue, are you making your summation, or do you intend to question your witness any further? No further questions. Stradiberry? I beg the court's indulgence. The matter which has a bearing on this issue requires investigation. Might we recess until tomorrow? I don't believe that will be necessary, Mr. Atterbury. I have heard enough and am prepared to rule. However, I will delay my ruling until noon tomorrow. If within that time you have anything to bring to the court's attention, I will receive it. In Mr. Blue's presence, of course. This court stands adjourned. Ready, Ma?
Jamie catches you in that house, he may figure he has every right to shoot you. I don't care. Paul wasn't the kind to play practical jokes. I saw him as plain as I see you. Johnny! What if Jamie should see you? I'm sorry, Ma. Jonas, you know he shouldn't be here. I know, Emma. He's just as stubborn as his father. Where's Jamie? I think he's in his room. <laughs> Any more trouble? I don't plan on causing any more. But I'm going to have one more look around whether he likes it or not. What are you looking for? He's got some idea his father may have left another will. That Bible passage, Ma. Genesis 27. Isaac couldn't do anything about his sons, but I think Pa did. No, Johnny. I'm not going to let you stay. You can't stop me, Ma. I'm going to have one more look. Yeah. Johnny! Never Johnny! mind, Emma. Let him go. Let him take his look. Then maybe we can get him out of here before Jamie sees him. doing here? So you figure the same way, huh, Jamie? What'd you find? Nothing, and I told you to stay out of here. What are you scared of, Jamie? What are you hiding? Stay away from me! I told you to stay out of here! I'm going to give him a couple of more minutes and then... <laughs> He's got it. I, John Haney, hereby bequeath... You were right, Johnny. There was another will. Of a later date. Leaving everything to you. This will stand up in court tomorrow. The appearance of John Haney is not unique. Over the years, many such instances have been reported and documented. In fact, the event on which tonight's story is based was directly responsible for a ruling by a court of law, the only one of its kind in our legal history. Jonas Atterbury knew his law. The newfound will was presented in court the next day and accepted without delay as valid. In leaving his estate to his eldest son, John Haney had chosen wisely. John Jr. was not a vindictive man. James was given an equitable share of the estate and departed for parts unknown. And Emma Haney was content in the knowledge that the rest of her life would be spent in the home that she loved. More than that, she knew that when she died, she would rest beside her loved ones undisturbed. For to John Haney, Jr., the land was a sacred trust, not to be passed from hand to hand, but held for his children and his children's children. Science does not as yet know all that happens to us after life leaves our bodies, but we cannot say with certainty that there is no explanation of what you have just seen. We can only assume that there may well be one. That train is the Southeast Limited. See it? 
Long, sleek, and powerful. Clicking off the miles and the humming rails. A masterpiece of 20th century mechanical perfection. Nothing about it to suggest lurking hate, or fear, or superstition, or death. But let's take a look into compartment A, car 17. John and Betty Loomis, just married, are going for their honeymoon to John's ancestral estate. John, I'm so happy. <laughs> How soon do we get to Louisville? In about an hour, Betty. Just think, I married into one of the oldest families in the state. I hope you'll be very happy, darling. Oh, I will, I will. You do love me, don't you, John? Of course I do, baby. I'll always love you. Always. No matter what happens. <laughs> what do you mean, no matter what happens? What could happen? John, something's bothering you. No, no, it's nothing at all. You're hiding something. There's something you haven't told me. It's nothing, Betty. It's nothing to worry about. You don't want to tell me? No, not now. Maybe later. Why are you playing with that piece of yellow string? What? You've been playing with it ever since we came onto the train. Hmm. <laughs> Gosh, I... I never noticed. I watched you. You've been tying a knot in it. A knot? Good Lord. I must have tied it without knowing what I was doing. You... You've tied it into a noose. A hangman's noose. I, I don't know how I came to make it or where I picked it up. Well, it, it's only a piece of string. Yes, it's only a piece of string. Betty. What is it, John? Here, take this. A gun? Take it. But why? If, if I should ever try to... If I should ever try to strangle you... John. Please listen to me. If I should ever try to strangle you, promise me to use that gun on me. What are you talking about? Lomasville, next stop. No, this... Next stop, Lomasville. This is where we can... John, what's this all about? That piece of yellow string and, and now this gun? Put it away, Betty, and remember what I said. Don't ever forget it. Dark here. This is just a way station. The train only stopped here to let us off. Otherwise, it goes right through. Oh? I thought Loomisville was a big town. Well, it used to be a hundred years ago, but now there's only the Loomis estate. Well, are we far from the estate? About two miles. Old Herman Galt should be here to pick us up in the station wagon. Herman Galt? Mm -hmm. He's the handyman. There's been a Galt working for the Loomis family for the last hundred and fifty years. John, I don't like it here. Dark, and that wind. Oh, the devil can Galt be? I wrote them what train we were taking. I'm right, what? Mr. John. Oh, Galt, you frightened my wife. I'm sorry, ma'am, if I scared you. Oh, that, that's all right. It, it was just the way you spoke so suddenly out of the darkness. If you'll follow me, I've got the station wagon back here. John, he doesn't like me. God, no, that's just his way. He's very devoted to the family. Where do you get to know him? I don't think I care to. Johnny, he's driving too fast. It's so dark. Don't worry, Betty. Galt knows this road like the back of his hand. We'll be there in a few minutes. I'm frightened. Darling, please, tell me why you gave me the gun. No, I, I can't tell you now, Betty. Maybe after you meet Uncle Everard. John. What? What's that in your hand? What? Oh. Another piece of string. A red one this time. Oh, I, I, I must have picked it up in here, off the seat. You've knotted it into another hangman's noose. Golf. Yes, Mr. John. This piece of red string, did you put it here? No, sir. Then how did it get here? You ought to know. Yes. Yes, I, I ought to know. Uh, God, why are you stopping here? We're home, ma'am. This is the entrance to the Loomis estate. I've got to get out and open the gate. 
I'll be right back. Betty, I've, I've got to get out, too. I've got to see for myself. See what, John? You stay here, Betty. But, uh, stay right where you are. Wait a minute. I'm coming, back, too. Betty. Get back in the car. Mr. John is right, ma'am. You shouldn't go with him. Take care of her, Galt. I won't be long. Galt, where's he going? That is the Loomis family cemetery. Cemetery? What does he want to see in there in the middle of the night? He'll tell you himself, ma'am. In due time. No, I'm going to find out right now. Better not, ma'am. Better come John! Back. John, wait for me. Betty, I told you to stay I'm in that going car. with you. I want to know what there is in that cemetery. Get back in that car. I'm your wife now. I have a right to know what this is all about. I'm going with you. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. But hold on to that gun I gave you. Keep it in your hand all the time. John, why? You'll why? find out soon enough. This is the gate of the family cemetery. All the Loomises and their wives are buried here. It's so shadowy. White tombstones look like ghosts. Hold my hand, John. No. Just hold on to that gun. John, whose grave is this with the high tombstone? My great-grandfather's. Stuart Loomis. He founded the Loomis estate. This is my grandfather's grave. His wife. Here's my father. My mother. And... And that's all. That should be all. What do you mean? Come over here. This is what I came to see. This is what I've been afraid of. John. John, it, it's an open grave. Freshly dug. Yes, Betty. It was just dug tonight. But who is it for? Betty, darling. I, uh, I'm afraid it's for you. poor Betty letting herself in for, with a fresh grave waiting for her on a honeymoon, and a husband who ties little strings into hangman's nooses. But you know, come to think of it, Betty's a lucky girl at that. How many girls who get married nowadays can count on finding a nice snug place all ready for them to lie down in and rest in peace? <laughs> Now, let's hurry back to our date in a graveyard. Remember? With poor Betty, whose husband has just told her he's afraid the freshly dug grave is for her. John, what do you mean? Who dug this grave for me? Who? <laughs> if I told you, you'd think I was crazy. No, you've got to tell me. If I'm in danger, I have a right to know. Was it God? Your Uncle Everard? No. Well, at least I don't think so. His wife, Christine. Betty, do you believe that a ghost could dig a grave? A ghost? Do you mean I, I'm in danger from a ghost? Oh, I told you you'd think I was crazy. John, what, why are you looking at me like that? I don't know. Betty, have you got that gun with you? No, I, I left it in the car. What good would a gun be against a ghost? There's a station wagon still waiting at the gate, but I don't see Galt. Maybe he went up to the house. Galt, where are you? Hello there, John. What? What's up? Uncle Everard. What happened to Galt? He came up to the house. Said you'd gone into the cemetery. So I thought I'd better come down. Oh. His... Is it there? Yes, it's there. A freshly dug grave. Yeah. Uncle Everard, this is my wife, Betty. How are you, Betty? Hello. You saw the grave too, Betty? Yes, and, and John says he thinks it's for me. 
I'm afraid I don't understand all You this. haven't told her anything yet, John? Well, just, just a, a little. I, I couldn't bring myself to. I think it's time you did. More tea, Betty? Thank you, Uncle Everard. I will have a little more. You, John? No, thanks. Too bad Christina's ill. She's upstairs in our room. But I hope she'll be better by tomorrow. You can see her then. Maybe. What do you mean? That grave out there. Maybe it'll be filled tomorrow. John, don't you think it's time you kept your promise to tell me what this is all about? You tell her, Uncle Everard. Well, Betty, there's a ghost in the Loomis family. That's it in a nutshell. Oh, I see. And it was a ghost who dug that grave. I know it sounds mad. But after 150 years, we Loomises have come to the conviction that it can't be anything but a ghost. 150 years? You mean... John's great-grandfather, Stuart Loomis, settled this strip of seacoast under a patent from the colonial governor. There's his picture over the fireplace. Wait. He doesn't look much like you, John. Stuart Loomis was a hard man. There was a French privateer in these waters who made a lot of trouble in those days. Gaston Leroux, who sailed the seas with his wife, Antoinette. But what has a French pirate and his wife to do with that grave? Stuart Loomis captured Leroux and his wife, and under the authority conferred upon him by the governor, had the power to hang them. You mean the woman, too? Yes. He hanged them both on a gibbet where our family cemetery now stands. Oh, how terrible. Before he died, Gaston LaRue laid a curse on the Loomis family. He swore that just as his wife was hanged, so would all the Loomis women die. He swore that he would come back and dig a grave for the wife of a Loomis in every generation and furnish the noose by which a Loomis would strangle his own wife. But, but that's incredible. Short while afterward, a fresh grave was found beside the gibbet where LaRue had been hung. That night, Stuart Loomis's wife, John's great-grandmother, was found hanging by the neck from the eaves of this very house. And Stuart Loomis? I told you Stuart Loomis was a hard man and had made many enemies. There were many who hated him deeply and bitterly. He was arrested and tried for the murder of his wife. Convicted and executed. Now you know the secret of the Loomis family. But, John, that, that still doesn't prove there's a ghost. No, that one incident doesn't prove it. But it happened again when the next Loomis married. John's grandfather. And to the next Loomis, John's father. Sometimes a year after he married, sometimes five years. But the curse never fails. It's happened in every generation? Yes. And now, John Loomis has brought a new wife home. And there's a freshly dug grave waiting in the family cemetery. Then... Then I'm next. Hmm? I don't know, Betty. Maybe that grave isn't for you. What? Maybe it's for Christine. For my wife. This, this is all ridiculous. A, a ghost couldn't dig a grave, make John strangle me to death. Uncle Everard, you, you can't believe such a legend. It can't be true. Maybe not, my dear. But the graves of the strangled Loomis women are out there to prove it. <laughs> Good night, Uncle Everard. Good night, John. Good night, Uncle Everard. This is such a big room. It's so gloomy. The whole house is like that. It lies gloomy and sullen under the Loomis curse. 
Oh, Betty, I love you so much. We'll beat the curse together. Let me go, darling. I want to change my clothes and wash. All right. There's the bathroom over there. I'll only be a minute. All right, darling. Oh, it's a lovely bathroom. <gasps> Betty, what is John, it? John, quick. What? Look. Hanging from the shower bar. What? A hangman's noose. It's a real one this time. Of rope. Ready to hang someone. Who put it there? It's the Loomis curse. We can't get away from it. No ghost could have hung that rope there. Let, let, let's call Uncle Everett. All right. Have you got the gun with you? No, it's in my handbag. Well, get it. But John... Get it, I say. All right, John. Here. Here, I've got it. All right, now keep it with you all the time. And don't be afraid to use it on me if necessary. All right, let's get your uncle. This is his room. I wonder if I ought to wake him. It might upset Aunt Christine. She's sick. We've got to wake him. Better knock harder. Well, it wasn't locked. Call him. Uncle Everard. Uncle Everard? He doesn't answer. But there's a light in the room. Push the door further open. All right. Well, there's nobody in the room. The bed's empty. Uncle Everard? Aunt Christine? Maybe in the bathroom. The door is open. Ah! Betty! John, Mark! Put it... Put... Aunt Christine. She's hanging by the neck. She... She's dead. The same kind of a noose is in our bathroom. Uncle Everard Hanger, it's the Loomis curse catching up with us. No oh, Galt, any trace of Uncle Everard? I searched the whole house, basement to attic, not a sign of him. He must have gone out, come along. But it's raining. We've got to find him, Betty, come on. dark out here. How will we ever find you? I have a flashlight, ma'am. You look. What? Fresh footprints in the slush. Oh, they must be Uncle Everard's. They lead down toward the cemetery. Come along, go. Here, Mr. John, you can see for yourself the footprints lead right to this new grave. But why did he come here? There's the answer, Daddy. A cross at the head of the empty grave. Oh. Throw your flashlight on it, go. There's something written on it. It says, Christine Lewis. <gasps> Betty, what is it? Look. Over there. Another grave. He's dug another one. There's a cross on this one, too. Does it say anything? Yes. Yes, it does. It says, Betty Loomis. <laughs> John, sit close to me. That portrait of Stuart Loomis over the fireplace looks so real. It frightens me. Now, remember, Betty, whatever happens, hold on to that gun and don't be afraid to use it tonight. Where is Gold? He ought to be here soon. He went to look for some weapons. Here I am, <gasps> but John. Gold, you always frighten me coming in so quietly. I'm sorry, ma'am. Here, Mr. John, these ought to be pretty good weapons. Size? Yes, I had them sharpened only the other day. They could slice a man's head off in one stroke. Take one, Mr. John. Thanks. But I'd hate to use it on Uncle Everard. If he shows up tonight, you'd better use it. Maybe he's come back into the house through the back way. I'll go through the house again if you like. This time I'll start with the attic. Be careful, Galt. I will, Mr. John. John, I don't like him. Galt? And I don't think he likes me either. Oh, that's that true. Darling, what's that? It must be Galt in the attic. Help, Mr. Galt! Help! You must have met Uncle Everard hiding up there. Stay right here, Betty, and hold on to that gun. John, be careful. Don't worry, just take care of John, yourself. come back. I'm frightened. I'm afraid to be alone. There's, there's nothing to be afraid of. I have this gun. And if anybody comes... 
the lights. Lights went out. Who, who's there? Who's in this room? Don't come any closer. I have a gun and I'll shoot. I can't see you, but I'll shoot at the sound. John, help me! Rope. Around my neck. Let's go. I'll shoot. It's not loaded. I took the bullets out when you left it in the car. Galt. Yes, ma'am, it's Galt. Mr. John is busy up there in the attic with the body of Mr. Everard. I killed him, too. And when Mr. John comes downstairs, he'll find you. And I'll cut him down in the dark with my scythe. Why? Why? There were others besides the pirate LaRue who hated Stuart Loomis. Like my own great-grandfather, he was in the service of Stuart Loomis, and he hated him. When LaRue laid the curse on the Loomises, my great-grandfather decided to make it come true. It was he who strangled the wife of Stuart Loomis. And through the years, the gods from father to son have handed down their hate. You... You're mad. Maybe. I'll tighten the noose and finish you. Where are you? Why is it dark in here? John! John, look out. It's all he has aside. So what? I... John! John! Oh! Oh! Who is it? Oh, darling. Darling, where are you? Here, John, here. Oh, darling. Betty, we finished forever with the Loomis curse. That was a pretty rough honeymoon for Betty. But you know, there's a lesson in her story for forgetful wives. Yes, if you keep tying little colored strings to your fingers to remind you of things and you still can't remember them, why not try a rope neatly tied around your neck? It's sure to help you forget. <laughs> Good night. Pleasant dreams? I'm a goner, yes, sir. They'll be coming after me. Well, of all of my kin, I'm the blackest sheep. So you'd better bury me deep. Go on and bury, bury me deep. Brother, I'm a sinner and now I know Bury, bury me deep, brother, so I won't have too far to go. Well, I lied and I stole and I've cheated too. I've done every evil thing a man can do. A robber and a liar, he can get off cheap. But a killer, good Lord, you got to bury him deep. Bury, bury me deep. Brother, I'm a sinner and now I know a very, very deep brother, so I won't have too far to go. Woman, don't you carry on to find a good man when I'm gone. Ain't no use for you to wail and weep we'll by a black tombstone and bury me deep. Bury, bury me deep, brother, I'm a sinner and now I know Bury, bury me deep, brother, so I won't have too far to go Stack my bones in the little old heap And a dig a big hole and bury me deep Bury me deep, bury me 
Fog seems to be at home there. I told you this island was no place for you. My mother lived here. And died here. Violently. She lived here for your sake. Kale, I don't blame you for resenting me. I hadn't realized the name Leo Granger was still headline news. I never imagined that the press would revive the whole dirty mess again. Did? have to remain isolated here for a long while. But that's no reason for you to stay buried on this forsaken island. Leo, I don't hold you accountable for the position I find myself in. It's just that, for the present at least, I too would like to avoid the public. In fact, for a while I'd like not to see anybody. And I'm afraid that won't be possible, Gail. If you insist on remaining here. Why? There are a few people I must see. Some, shall we say, associates. You're going to let them come out here? I'm going to invite them out here. Surely you don't think they'd accept your invitation. Well, they'd be afraid to. I have an idea that their greed will outweigh their fear. Their greed? Yes. It was their greed that made them invest heavily with me. Because they thought I could make more money for them than anyone else. Then when my financial empire crashed, they were the first to cry swindler. Now, if I can intimate to them that they will have a chance of sharing in that supposed loot, they'll respond to my invitation. What was that? I'm just knocking on my pipe, dear. No, I meant that noise outside. It sounded like a branch for a tree. Wind must be coming up. I'll go and see. What is it, Doc? I thought you might put me up, Leo. What do you want it for this time? Oh, merely petty loss. I had to eat. I couldn't get a job after serving my term with you. The newspapers printed our pictures again. Everybody recognized me. It won't be convenient to keep you here too long. I've invited some of our friends over for the weekend. That crowd that sent us up? How did you know that? You're more confidential as my cellmate than as my employer. And you were less of a menace behind prison bars than you were in my accountant's cage. I have the same score to settle with that crowd that you have. I could be of help to you. You might. Let's talk it over. 
Go to the small door under this balcony. It's open. Wait for me there. Won't be too long. I said, wait for me there. Leo, I've been thinking. I believe I've discovered why you failed in business. You surrounded yourself with the wrong people. I didn't surround myself with them. Sylvia Jordan did. How could she? Blackmail? Practically. As my secretary, she knew a lot about my private affairs, which gave her a certain amount of influence. Then when I married your mother, instead of her, Sylvia became vitriolic. She sold me out to her friends, Richfield, Kavanaugh, a whole double-crossing gang that railroaded me. I wouldn't have cared if they'd stopped at that, but they didn't. One of them, maybe the whole group indirectly, was responsible for the death of your mother. Leo, what are you saying? Oh, the circumstances surrounding the murder of your mother was obviously prearranged. Isn't it logical, Gail, that this group, having put me safely away in prison, should come back here to learn from karma the whereabouts of the fortune I was supposed to have sorted away? Failing, they struck her down fatally. And they ransacked the place until they were disturbed by the launch returning with the servants. But if any of them did murder Mother, do you think they'd risk coming back out here? I don't forget they didn't get what they came after. I tell you, they won't accept. Well, let's wait and see. Johnson Psychic Research Laboratory. Alec Richfield. This is Emily. I was engrossed casting a horoscope. Otherwise, I would have known it was you wanting to contact me. You received an invitation? Wait a minute. Let me see. It's from Leo Granger, inviting you to a weekend at Fog Island. Just a minute. Furthermore, I can tell you the date. It's for the 16th. What? Well, of course my powers of divination haven't diminished. What do you make of it, Emily? Well, are you consulting me professionally as an astrologist or socially as a friend? Well, I thought as a good friend of old standing. In that case, I'd say Leo wanted something. Advice. As you may recall, he never went into any big ventures without first consulting me. Yes. And you never advised him without first asking John Cavanaugh what to tell him. Cavanaugh was very generous with me when I influenced Leo's transactions. Yes. And your influence paid you well. However, I'm curious to know what you think Leo's up to. Well, I, for one, am going out to Fog Island to find out. And you? I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Nevertheless, I'll probably see you out there amongst the others. And just uh, who would the others be? Why, our own little crowd, of course. John Cavanaugh, Sylvia Jordan, and... Yes, that's right. What is Leo Granger to say, John? How do you know this is from Leo Granger? This is private secretary for years. I might at least be expected to recognize his handwriting, don't you think? <laughs> oh, of course. Have you read Between the Lines? Read what? That I might see justice done. Well? Does it occur to you that Leo may have found out how you played up to Karma while he was out of the way? I didn't. I always liked Karma. There was no point in avoiding her just because he got into trouble. 
And there was no point, I suppose, in your chartering that boat all by yourself just to call on her at Fog Island. Who said I chartered a boat? The man who owned it. He also admitted taking a veiled woman out to the island, alone. I never wear veils. Besides, why should I want to see Karma? To get information. That needn't exclude you in Leo's mind as one of Alex's henchmen. How do you know that? I know Leo Granger. I know the way his mind works. He's a very suspicious and vindictive man. How about Kingsley? Emmeline Bronston? Yes, even you. Don't forget the damaging effect your testimony as his private secretary had on the case. I'm not forgetting it. Nevertheless, I don't expect Leo ever to forgive me. Leo Granger will never forgive any one of us. Five years in the penitentiary can do a lot to a man. Not to Leo Granger. You get one of these? The same? Identically. And I dare say there's a half a dozen others floating around amongst our erstwhile associates. Should you go? I think so. You're not afraid? Are you? Well, not exactly afraid, but... Uh, but what? Maybe intrigued. After all, he got away with quite a fortune. If he's going to pay off, I want to be there. That's what I thought. And if you go, I'll go. And if we go, the others will go. Well, they... Uh, there's safety in numbers. I'd say about four or five. I can't tell through the storm. Good. So, Allison. Yes, sir. The guests are here. Will you look after the luggage? Very well, sir. Fit, John, and you? Never better. Hello, Leo. Well, Sylvia, this is a curious place. Yes, yeah, strangely enough, it was built by pirates. But you shouldn't have any difficulty in finding your way around, John. Thank you. Nice to see you again, Sylvia, after all this time. Thanks, Leo. You're looking well. You know, penitentiaries aren't exactly a health resort. I wouldn't recommend them to my friends. 
There's a fire waiting. Thank you. Leo. <laughs> if it's any consolation to you, your water sign predicts satisfaction for you here. What about you, Emily? Me? Don't you know a seer is never any good for herself? That's a climb. Getting soft, Alec. Oh, not so you'd notice it, Leo. Of course, cigars may have cut my wind a bit, but I still smoke them when I want them. Something I was forced to give up, cigars. You got those that I sent you? Yes, I got them, but they weren't my fancy. However, my cellmate enjoyed them and survived. Lucky. Hello, Mr. Granger. I'm Jeff Kingsley, son of Jefferson Kingsley, to whom you sent an invitation. Apparently, you didn't know Dad died a month ago. Oh, no, I... I didn't. I'm sorry. You don't mind, of course, my coming out here to see justice done? Of course not. Come in. Thank you. know all the others? I introduced myself to them on the launch on the way out. Yes, I know everyone, including your stepdaughter. Although I don't know that she remembers me from college. Hello. Hello. It's been a long time. Yes. Surprised? Somewhat. Would you like me to explain? I don't think that's necessary. You're not very glad to see me, are you? Should I be? Mm, maybe not. Would it bore you out any if I were to tell you I'm glad to see you? Thank you. I'm sure you're all wondering why I invited you here. So let's settle that question right now at the beginning. I invited you out here for, let me say, retribution. Now, retribution is not a word. It can mean so many things. It could mean reward. The return of money you think I stole from you. It could mean giving you an opportunity of getting even with me. Or with each other. It could mean revenge. Seeking a life for a life. You see, you killed something very dear to me. It might have been friendship. It might have been my ideals. It might have been my wife. Perhaps you never knew it, but I happen to love karma. She was more than just a wife to me. She was my ideal. My friend. Whichever one of you killed her will kill again and just as wantonly. So let me warn you, the innocent among you, to be wary of the murderer whenever he or she finds it necessary to strike again. And that, my dear friends, concludes the business of the evening. Now let's all be as sociable as we can. Hmm? Oh, I omitted to mention that we have another house guest, Doc Lake. You all remember Doc Lake? I'm sure. My accountant, who was sent up with me. Doc, our friends are having a little drink. Perhaps you'd care to join them. Good evening. Yes. Since Leo puts it so delicately, I'd be delighted to have a drink. And a new old acquaintance. Oh, by the way... I'm afraid I had to send the launch back to the mainland for some slight repairs. It'll be back in the morning, probably. In the meantime, I'm quite sure you'll find every convenience on this island, except, of course, the telephone. Dinner will be at 8.30. household when it was in the hands of pirates to let a man eat his fill then permit him to know his fate i'm not so barbaric of course i'm merely following the old custom by giving each one of you a token favor or clue shall we say to retribution Thank you. 
Perhaps it's the key to your happiness, my dear. Oh, Kingsley, there is a superstition that the gift of a knife will cut friendship. I'm not superstitious, are you? Hmm? Not with this in my hand, I'm not. I think I retire. I have been used to very early hours these last few years. I think our guests would enjoy a little music if you feel so disposed. Anything special you would like? No, anything you like. Preferably something favoring the woodwinds. Why the woodwinds, Leo? I don't know, dear. There's something very plaintive about the music of oboes, flutes, clarinets, and something very enticing. Mind if I join you? And if I did? I'd join you anyway. You tried that before. And miss. And this time? I'm your guest, remember? Not mine. Leo Granger. all about. This party or whatever it is. Don't you know? No. Then why did you come? I had my reasons. I'm sure of that. Good reasons. From your point of view? All of which means you're not going to tell me? That's right. Which also means you don't trust me? Right. Favors Leo Gibbs. Or do you understand yours? And yours, Dr. Lake? I suspect Leo wants to keep track of you. <laughs> Mine is really quite simple. Leo always said my pencils weren't practical. The eraser, of course, is one of Leo's little innuendos. I have a feeling Leo is not in his right mind. Have you felt that? Do you understand, I hope, that I have never actually practiced the profession of medicine. Nevertheless, that doesn't prevent you from hazarding a personal opinion. Not necessarily. Uh, but as a student of the occult, perhaps you could hazard an opinion. The sign, Pisces. Of course you know what his sign indicates. Two fishes swimming in opposite direction and with Jupiter in the ascendant. I should not like to predict what would happen. Uh, his health, never too sturdy, hasn't been aided by prolonged inactivity. I shouldn't like to hazard an opinion either. Do you know, Doctor, I think you and I have something in common. No? What's that, may I ask? We've both been in Leo's confidence. I, from an astral point of view, have been in his spiritual confidence. And uh, you, from a business point of view, have been in his financial confidence. Oh. So, possibly by pooling our information, we might work more or less together to our mutual advantage. Clever of you to deserve that. Death. 
What shall I owe my sister, Chet? What is it? Multiplication tables, two times two and so on. It might be one of Leo's subtle warnings, insinuating you not to attempt any more juggling of figures to your own satisfaction. But I've got a feeling it goes deeper than that. Tables, skulls. I didn't see. He stuffed it in his pocket too fast. Alec knows something. I wonder what that key is to. What key? One Gale got. Why don't you find out? I will when I get a chance. Watch out for young Kingsley. I don't trust him. Suppose you watch out for young Kingsley. I will. I didn't know you played so well. Didn't you? There was a time I thought I knew pretty much about you. Did you? Remember the long walks in the rain? Horseback rides? Tennis? The time you beat me six to three. The funny things you used to like, your craving for red, chocolate sundaes, opal. They weren't your birthstones, were they? No, I thought not. They were always bringing you hard luck. Like the time we were going to the symphony together and you had on your new high-heeled red slippers. Your heel got caught in the grating. You know, it's a shame I couldn't get those nails to stay in. We went down the aisle together. And you don't know how much trouble I had getting those tickets right in the third row, just to show you off. Oh, I've still healed, by the way, but I don't suppose you have any use for it, do you? I haven't any use for any heel. No, I thought not. But will you ever forget our picnic down by the river bank? With that great field of daisies by the Weeping willows. <laughs> Remember how ecstatic you were about the weeping willows? You know, you haven't done what Leo asked you to. You mean the wood wren? Yes. Have you forgotten? No. for the look into the future. What do you say? You want me to cast horoscopes? Oh, no, nothing so individual. I mean, something that would let us all in, like, uh, you know, a seance. Oh, a seance. Well, if you're all in accord, why don't you gather round the desk? Good.
a burden on your soul. A heavy burden. So heavy it may submerge you. I don't know why it is, but I feel as if water was coming up over me. I feel the sensation of drowning. Stop it, stop it. I don't want to hear anymore. Very well, then. Strange, but I can't seem to reach you. You seem to bar the way. No. Bars are in the way. It will skip me for the moment. And for yourself, what do you see? Myself? It's very difficult to see for myself. But I feel about to be elevated. Mind telling me how you did it? It was no trick. Seance over already, Emily? Yes, Alec, I'm rather tired tonight. Why don't you turn in? I think I will. I wonder if you'd get me a book, Alec. I'm tired, but not sleepy. I thought perhaps you might pick out something from Leo's shelf over there. Don't you think you'd better select your own reading material, Emily? You have such a good mind. Oh. Tut, tut. Would you be looking for any book in particular, Alec? For Emmeline? Something light, of course. Oh, yeah. How about this? What is it? Crime and punishment. <laughs> Ideal. Thank you, Alec. Say, it's getting late. Time we were all turning in. How about it, John? Ready to call it a night? We are. I might as well. Ready, Emily? Telling me what you're running away from. Am I running away? Of course. First from all your friends by coming out to this desolate spot to live, and now from everyone inside. What right have you to pry into my private affairs? Maybe I like you. You have a very peculiar way of showing it. Well, I'm a very peculiar person. Yes. Maybe I like you more than you realize. Really? I realize you're just a little girl in a lot of trouble. What trouble? That I mean to find out. Is that all you mean find out? No, but that'll do for a starter. 
And after that? Gail, have I ever done anything to make you mistrust me? You came out here with the others, didn't you? Obviously. Why? To see you. I don't believe you. Gail, why don't you break down and be yourself? Why don't you let me help you? There's only one way you can help me, and that is to leave me alone. Now, look here, young lady. Don't try my patience too far. You might as well know once and for all I have no intention of leaving you alone. Very well, then. I'll leave you alone. I came in to borrow some cleansing cream. Why, of course. I'm not robbing you, am I? No, I seldom use it. Oh, but you should, nightly, my dear. Too much bother. Nothing should be too much bother to protect your skin. In this climate, one doesn't need to take the trouble. But if you don't take the trouble to preserve your skin now while it's healthy, you'll regret it. I'll chant that. Already it shows the signs of neglect. Ma? What an interesting room. The mother didn't decorate it. These things were here when Leo bought the place. Leo bought it? I thought Tom I bought it for him. Leo bought it in car. <laughs> up a bit, sir. As a butler? Or as an escaped lifer, Al Jenks? That's a lie. What, that you're an escaped lifer? I acted a bit phony as a butler when Granger wasn't around. I made some pretty wise contacts in the big house. Contacts that could find out a lot of things. I wrote a few letters. I had some answers. Came over with the mail for the guests tonight. Like this one. Hello, Doss Cook. Uh, the eel you describe with a scar across his left palm. Certainly, Al Jenks, the lifer who crashed out of here about a month ago. I thought you ought to know because... yourself, Doc? Yes. I was just uh, looking for you, Leo. Indeed. Yes, yes. seem a bit ill at ease. That's a pity. I've given them the run of the house. What more could they have me do? Give them enough rope. Hey, Leo? Something like that. They're all wondering what you've got up your sleeve. Including you, Doc. Have you forgotten, Leo? I know what you've got in mind for me. Have you forgotten that time in when I showed you how they framed the two of us and you blew your top. And that day when you learned your wife had been murdered. The day you really went stir crazy. Have you forgotten what you said to me that day? Under the circumstances, no one could hold me accountable for what I said. Couldn't they? And especially if what you said came to pass. Well, what did I say, Doc? Plenty. And if it took your last dollar. That's just exactly what it did. What, take your last dollar? Oh, that's a good one. That's a fact. However, if you prefer to believe us, do that I have a fortune buried here, I can't prevent you. But you said you were looking for me. What for? I thought you might like to know what your guests are doing. I know pretty well what they're doing. After all, there was nothing I could ever tell Karma that was encouraging. 
All I saw for her was trouble and worry in her tragic end. You must saw that? Oh, yes, quite clearly and in detail. I saw her choking her into insensibility. That's a lie. It is? How do you know? She wasn't choked to death. She was stabbed with a knife. Perhaps you know for certain that she wasn't first strangled into unconsciousness. You're making the whole thing up to give the impression you're clairvoyant. Unless you had something to do with her murder. I had less to do with her murder than you had. Why, you fraud, if you dare to... Come in. Perhaps you ladies don't realize it, but your voice is cat when you get excited. Thank you for stopping us, Alex. And you're keeping this young lady from her rest. You're very considerate, Mr. Richfield. I really would like to go to bed. Of course. I merely thought I might... Come along, Alex. It was your idea to leave Gail alone. I thought I left them here. I didn't know you smoked a pipe. Oh, didn't you? I've always been very interested in pipes. Do you mind if I have a look at yours? Certainly. <laughs> I must have left it in my room. Purposely. Have a cigar. Thanks. Light. You're not smoking? Not at the moment. Uh -huh. Very good cigar. As you should know, Alec. I was all the fun of my comforts, even managed to get a few where you sent me. Mm, you're forgetting that having arranged your defense. We got you off with five years instead of 25. Five years was long enough for you to accomplish your purpose, Alec. Five years of receiver for Granger Incorporated gave you ample time to liquidate my enterprises for your own advantage. By the time you got through milking your enterprises, there was nothing left to liquidate. So you came over here to the island to see what you could get out of karma. I advise you to be careful of your accusations, Leo. We are not fooling anybody now, Alec. There's no jury here, no judge, nor will there be any witnesses. Does that constitute a threat, Leo? Take it for what it's worth, Alec. I might have let you off had you been content merely with getting me out of the way for a while. But that you put karma out of the way permanently for that, Alec. Keep away, Leo. You can't escape, Alec. Oh, can't I? It was you who murdered karma. I thought so. I suspected you all along, but I wanted proof. I've got that proof now, Alec. Obviously, that was the way you stuck her down. A sudden thrust in the dark without warning, without giving her the slightest opportunity of defending herself. You very stupidly used the same technique, the same knife, no doubt. So you see now, I think, that you're not as clever as you thought you were. You see now, don't you, that you played right into my hands. You see now, Alec, you convicted yourself, Alec. <laughs> Sealed your own doom. You signed your own death.
Interesting, Emily. Very interesting indeed. And a little amusing. <laughs> what is? The fact that Leo should give you the key without the means of using it. I don't know what you mean. You know how that key opens? No. Or how to get to what it opens? No. I thought not. But I do. So it seems to me it might be wise for us, you and I, to pool our resources, shall I say, and split proceeds. Equally? Share and share alike. I'll handle the key. As you wish. Follow me. the key, the privilege is yours, my dear Emily.
are you doing here, Kingsley? I was just wondering what you were doing. Oh, I don't think it would do you any good to find out. How about you, Jeff? How does your head feel? Oh, feels as though somebody had thrown the book at it. It was a chair. Oh, yeah, that phony doctor. I've got to find him. Jeff, take it easy, please. Well, after the way he conked me. But he's a dangerous criminal. He, he has a prison record. He's got more than that coming to him. And I think I know where to find him. Jeff, don't. Please. For my sake. For your sake. Yes, dear. Look, come on. You'd better sit down. But, Gail, you don't seem to understand. I caught him going through the desk. Gail, do you have any idea what he was looking for? Well, I think I know. Mother told me once, it's something about the top center drawer. Something in it or near it that exposes a secret hiding place for valuables. Valuables? Uh-huh. Well, don't you think you ought to take a look and see if we got away with anything? I have looked. I don't know how to operate it. Let me try. What makes you think well, that... Well, that's very generous of you, John, seeing you think that gun is loaded. Of course it's loaded. I loaded it myself before dinner. You don't think I'd trust you around me with a loaded gun, do you? You idiot! <laughs> How did you know I wasn't going to give you his half? <laughs> oh, I know you, John. So, the clue Leo gave me. You're right, Alec. What we're looking for must be hidden in here. The table. The clue that Leo gave me. This slab here, um... Yes. John, give me a hand with this paper. Oh, wait a minute. Let's have it understood now. We share it three ways. Let's make it four ways. Just for the sake of sociability. What well, makes you imagine you're entitled to anything? I know where the bodies are buried. All right. It's understood then. We split four ways. Now, give me a hand. Yes, read it. 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 Read it.
bank and serve. This represents all I ever stole from Granger Incorporated. The paper this is written on. Unfortunate investments did the rest. May I suggest you divide it equally among yourselves so that I may feel justice is done. Sincerely, Leo Granger. I don't believe it. I do. It's just like Leo to have the last laugh. the key Leo Granger gave you opens that box. Mother's jewelry. Jeff, wait, listen to this. Gail, darling, this is all that's left of my inheritance. When Leo got into his financial difficulties, I gave him everything else I had to try to save him. But it went with the rest, into unfortunate investments. Please don't blame him too much. He tried. But Gail, darling, leave this island as soon as you can. There's no good will ever come to anybody here. God bless you and try to be happy. Your loving mother. Excuse me, what you put yourself through needlessly, Gail. Needlessly? Yes. Don't think I haven't seen through you. Don't think I don't know why you ran away from us all. It was your wounded ego. Ego? But, Jeff, every place I went, people looked at me accusingly. I knew what they were thinking. They were thinking she's Leo Granger's stepdaughter, and she'll come in for her share of his loot, too. I knew what you were thinking, Gail, but you were wrong. Dead wrong. Why... I'll bet you even thought that was the way I felt about you. Of course. And you thought I came out here with those cheap chiselers to grab off a hunk of loot. Oh, I didn't know what to think, Jeff. I didn't want to, but how could I think otherwise? You came over with them. coming back. Your launch? I recognize the motor. How long will it take you to pack? For what? Well, you're carrying out your mother's wishes, aren't you? Remember, she said, leave the island at once, and that's now. No, but Jeff... Don't argue. I'm taking you away from this place at once, even if I have to kidnap you. You won't have to kidnap me, Jeff. Well, then hurry. <laughs>
Yes, Jeff, I'm ready. Let's get going. Oh, but I'll have to find Leo and tell him I'm going. He isn't in his room. I found Leo. He has no objection to your going. Oh, but don't you think we ought to find out if any of the others want to come with us? I found that out, too. They're not coming with us. Not this trip. I'll send the launch back to them later. There's sun on the mainland, Gail. Sun. Um, That's what you need, Gail, sun. More than anything else. Unless it's me. I'll settle for both, Jeff. Does the next train leave? Oh, 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 oh. 